Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back to the Friday Late Show, already in progress. Um, you know, we like to do comedy here on the show in between bouts of pants crapping terror. But there are certain subjects that are genuinely hard to talk about, like the opioid crisis. It's an epidemic that affects both political parties, uh, Republicans, Democrats, rich people, poor people. It does not discriminate. And a lot of people blame Big Pharma, but only because it's their fault. <laughs> According... Yeah. Wow. According to the National Safety Council, four out of five new heroin users started by misusing prescription painkillers. It's right there on Amazon. Customers who bought Oxy also bought the Mexican brown horse. <laughs> now, one company that has profited massively off your pain is Purdue Pharmaceuticals, the makers of OxyContin, which is owned by the Sackler family, seen here not giving a <laughs> The Sacklers and Purdue have faced hundreds of lawsuits, including one right now by the state of Colorado, which alleges that Purdue Pharma downplayed the risk of addiction associated with opioids, exaggerated the benefits, and advised healthcare professionals that they were violating their Hippocratic Oath and failing their patients unless they treated pain symptoms with opioids. Well, they have a point. After all, the Hippocratic Oath clearly states, first, do no harm unless harming is extremely profitable, then harm, harm, harm. <laughs> Purdue, these people, these, uh, these pharma people, Purdue, they deny the charges, but here's the thing. Despite telling Congress that they didn't know about Oxy's potential for abuse until 2000, prosecutors have found that in over 100 notes recording their visits to doctors in the late 90s, the company's sales representatives used the words street value, crush, or snort. No, that's what happens when the head of sales is El Chapo. <laughs> now, in 2007, Purdue pled guilty to a felony charge of misleading regulators about OxyContin's potential for abuse and paid a fine of $600 million. You know you've been bad when the government finds you one aircraft carrier. <laughs> of course, Good. this same time, they made $35 billion, and now the Sacklers are taking their drug empire global because the family is moving rapidly into Latin America, Asia, the Middle East, Africa, and other regions and pushing for broad use of painkillers. This is the most dangerous American export since 1957's Plymouth Crumple. <laughs> Crumple, you're dead. <laughs> and if the Sacklers haven't done enough damage, it was revealed just this week that they own a second secret company, Rhodes Pharma, a little-known Rhode Island-based drug maker that is amongst the largest producers of off-patent generic opioids in the U.S. So they're selling the name brand and the generic. That's like a dealer selling methamphetamines and the generic brand President Choice Tooth Looseners. <laughs> Another not-so-fun fact about Rhodes Pharmaceuticals is in addition to selling all these off-brand opiates, they also just patented a new drug to help wean addicts from opioids. So, wow. the Sacklers addicted the country to opioids. Now they're going to profit off the cure? That takes a pair of swinging Sacklers. <laughs> but what can you do? It's classic marketing. Are you an old lady who swallowed a fly? Try spider. Complications from spider? Ask your doctor about bird. Addicted to bird? Introducing cat. Is cat ruining your life? Take dog. Dog still not working? How about goat? Goat causing you pain? Well, then, get the number one product in America, horse. How's the old lady? She's dead, of course. But the Sacklers are doing great. We'll be right back with Anna Kendrick.